worked for the past four years on behalf of all New Yorkers, no matter their income level, their age, their race, where they come from, reflecting our greatest ideal of this city as a place of vibrant diversity that is welcoming to all, which was at one point in time the vision we had for our country and will be again. So that's just an editorial. So through challenging times, he's built bridges between communities here, and he hasn't shied away from the open, hard, and honest dialogues about the problems impacting everyday lives of city residents. He's a model of visionary leadership nationwide, and his accomplishments so far include the establishment of pre-K universal access creation of the country's most ambitious homeless outreach and affordable housing initiatives, modernization of the city's health and hospital systems, and not for nothing, cities thrive for the First Lady. He's made great progress to improve the lives of nearly 9 million people who call this iconic city their home, and I really look forward to seeing all that he's going to accomplish in the next four years. So with that, Mayor of New York, Bill Blasio. Well done. Thank you, brother. You know what? I might want to steal your microphone. Thank you. Is that working? I think it's working. Okay. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. All right. Lively group. That was your test. Uh, so uh, I'm so glad everyone's here. Uh, this is a really exciting gathering, and, and it's for me, just powerful affirmation, just looking at all of you, powerful affirmation that a good idea can spread rapidly and can make a huge impact on millions and millions of people. So I'm, I'm thrilled. I know Sherlane's doubly thrilled that you're all here. Uh, Andy, I want to thank you uh, for everything you've done in public service, uh, for having devoted yourself to making sure that more and more people had access to care and having really done something about that and also the leading effort you have played in protecting uh, the Affordable Care Act against the many attempts to undermine it. Let's thank Andy for all he has done. Uh, I want to thank everyone, but I want to acknowledge uh, some folks who uh, I want to offer special appreciation to. And uh, mayors have a bond all over this country. It's an extraordinary bond. Uh, and it transcends region, it transcends party, it transcends the size of the city. We were honored at the last uh, Cities Thrive conference to have a great speech from uh, Mick Cornett, uh, mayor of Oklahoma City. Happens to be a Republican, happens to serve in Oklahoma, but we feel a tremendous bond. And that's one of the things that's actually very, very powerful in the Thrive movement, is that mayors have no hang-ups working with each other because uh, we feel tremendous commonality. So I want to particularly salute the mayors who are here, Carol Dutra Vernacci of Union City, California. Thank you, Carol. And Jacob Day of Salisbury, uh, Maryland. Thank you so much, Jacob. Let's give them a round of applause. And then the team uh, that has worked so hard here in New York City to bring Thrive to life. I will save the best for last when I introduce Sherlane. But uh, I want to thank everyone who has done this as a labor of love. I want to thank, of course, Deputy Mayor Richard Bury, uh, who has been outstanding in bringing all the agencies of the city government uh, into alignment on this. I want to thank our aging commissioner, uh, Donna Corrado, uh, for recognizing how much the mental health challenges of our seniors were going unrecognized and needed to be a focal point of Thrive. I want to thank Dr. Gary Belkin, the Executive Deputy Commissioner at Department of Health. He has been one of the real uh, energizers and uh, creative agents of making Thrive uh, come to life from the very beginning, from the very first meeting. So thank you, Gary, for your tremendous leadership. And you're going to hear uh, from Matt Nally, my Director of Federal Affairs in Washington. Uh, anyone who's been living through the Washington dynamic for the last uh, year uh, and can still cr give you a presentation in complete sentences that make sense uh, as a a man of fortitudes. You're going you're gonna to learn Matt is a deeply insightful guy about what's going on down there, but also uh, been deeply involved in our efforts with his team uh, to further thrive on every front, including the federal front. 
And finally, a thanks to our host, Anthony Crowell, the dean and president at New York Law School. Thanks for letting us be in this wonderful, wonderful space. Uh, everyone, look, um, this is so exciting because this is, you know, you, you may have heard the chant if you're a rally goer like me, you may have heard the chant, this is what democracy looks like. Well, uh, here in this room, this is what social change looks like uh, because what Thrive is doing is transformative. There's no other word. Uh, it will change, ultimately, this approach, this model, this movement will change millions of lives and uh, for the better. And, and, and sadly, and everyone in this room knows it, we're talking about, in many cases, the ultimate example of nowhere to go but up because our society has not grappled with these issues, has not even begun to in so many places. So what many of you will be doing is creating the very beginning of a proper approach to providing mental health services, and that's so exciting. Everyone here is present at the creation of something uh, that I have no doubt is going to leave a deep, lasting imprint. And we need it. And all the people we're here to serve need it. So it's exciting to be in a room of folks who feel the same things and are helping to build uh, similar approaches all over this country. Now, the numbers are impressive. I remember when Thrive started out here. It was a very a humble beginning of trying to just make sense of a thorny, challenging issue. And then it grew and it grew and it grew here. And then the word started to spread. And Sherlane and Richard and others started to talk to colleagues around the country. And people signed on and they signed on and they signed on. And I will always remember with deep pride the day we got that call. I think it was from Nebraska. Uh, when a mayor from the 50th state, we had, we had mayors from all 50 states at that moment, uh, when a mayor from Nebraska called to say, I want to join in, and we had all 50 states represented. Uh, here in this room, uh, and for this conference, more than 60 cities are represented, more than 30 states are represented. Uh, this gathering alone shows how quickly a good idea can grow, and again, how uh, extraordinary the impact will be over time. Now. I want to thank everyone because we not only have mayor's offices here, we have police departments, we have uh, schools, we have uh, mental health agencies, hospitals, we have all sorts of sectors represented, which makes another crucial point about Thrive, that everyone has to be at the same table for this to work, and this conference epitomizes it. Look, it's about creating a fairer society. And it's about making sure everyone is served. And it's about getting to the root causes of so many of our other problems. That won't happen without leadership. And what we've learned, not only in the United States, we've learned it all over the world, by the way. Uh, national governments, sadly, I don't say this with any joy, national governments are providing less and less cutting edge leadership. They're, they're providing less and less progress, less and less definition for their countries and the path forward. It's a very big, complicated global phenomenon. It's happening all over the industrialized world. We can see it very clearly. I don't celebrate it. I wish, I, I always say to people, I grew up in a time where you assume the federal government was the cutting edge, the, the, the bastion of progress. I'm still a little shocked how much we have to depend on ourselves to create these new realities. But it's the truth. And it might change someday. I don't ever want to give up hope. We should all work for that day where our federal government uh, is the great innovator uh, and, and the great sparker of progress. We should yearn that our state governments do that. In some cases, they do. In a lot of cases, they've pulled back. But the one place that we see no propensity to pull away and pull back and, and minimize is at the local level. Cities, towns, counties, uh, it's extraordinary. And it's absolutely national and consistent. Whether you talk in terms of innovation, whether you talk in terms of social progress, whether you talk in terms of more inclusive society, whether you talk in terms of creating initiatives to answer unanswered problems, and I'm talking about mental health, and I'm talking about fighting income inequality and, and uh, protecting us against global warming, I can go across the spectrum. Something powerful and I would say beautiful is happening all over America. It's been emerging over the last 10, 15, 20 years but it's really flowering now. People are taking matters into their own hands in the best way that consistent with the very best American traditions. And localities are saying, you know what? If our federal government's not doing it, if our state government's not doing it, we have no choice but to do it. And they're empowered in that process. 
And that doesn't mean we don't see the challenges. We do. We understand it's hard. We understand we don't often have the resources we need or the laws at the higher levels of government that we would like to facilitate our work, but that does not stop us every day from making progress. And Thrive is so powerful. And I'm about to introduce Shirlane, but I'll give a pre-point to my introduction. One of the beauties of Thrive is it is agile. It doesn't get bogged down if you know new federal funding's not approved, people don't collapse in a heap. Or if the law you wanted to get passed didn't get passed, it doesn't take away all your tools and your possibilities of action. Uh, Thrive is an agile, maneuverable approach that allows local progress to continue whatever other headwinds are out there. So look, we will keep fighting for the bigger change. We have to. And, and another beautiful thing I think happening right now is that because cities are more and more united across geography, across size of city, across uh, ideology, because we find common cause more and more, I think it will add up to more and more. I think what cities did, a great example uh, to show you, again, how quickly change can happen, the uh, Paris Agreement, when the federal government left the Paris Agreement on climate change, within weeks, 330 American cities had signed on and were taking tangible action uh, to achieve the goals of that agreement. This is a brand new paradigm. We're all part of a brand new wave that will create a different reality. We have to have the confidence that not only can we do great things locally, we can band together to achieve things that are greater than the sum of the parts, and that that will have a lasting impact. One of the most fundamental things is to break down the stigma and to educate. Uh, Charlene's going to talk about the weekend of faith. I always hold it up as one of the greatest things within all the great things that she and the team have achieved on Thrive. This is one of the ones that uh, really moves me the most. Because when faith communities across all faiths stand up in unison and say, this is an issue we all need to grapple with together. Come forward if you need help, it's OK. Uh, when the, for so many people, the arbiters of sort of conscience and values say, it's OK if you have a mental health challenge. This is a safe space to address it. The world starts to change right there. That was done by those houses of worship, but it was organized by a local government saying, we need you to step up. It's a beautiful example of grassroots action uh, energized by the central role of a local government. So look, um, the last point I want to make before I introduce your line, the when you put it all together, what we're doing is a, another version of do it yourself, right? Uh, uh, more and more people in this country have a do it yourself mentality. You can find a YouTube video to do anything nowadays, right? Probably you shouldn't try some of those things, but you can find a video that tells you how to do it. Uh, but we in leadership need to think that way too more. And uh, when we do that, and I, if, I could, if I could see what each of you are doing, if I could literally put it all on like one big screen, what each locality is doing, everyone doing something, everyone making some progress, changing the discussion on mental health, reducing the stigma, helping people get help who didn't have it before, making access easier, educating people on how to get help. Everyone's doing some version of that or another. When you add it all up, it brings us someplace different. Again, we used to have the illusion that what changed our country was a law got passed in Washington. And, and that wasn't all false, but it wasn't all true either. The law could get passed in Washington. That didn't mean it actually reached down to the grassroots and changed behavior. But in a funny way, there was something a little lazy in that worldview. Like, oh, they passed a law in Washington. We're done here. Think about any area you want to think about. We're never done just because they passed a law in Washington. The law being passed in Washington helps. But in the end, life is lived locally. The reverse is actually in many ways more powerful. The change happens locally more and more and more, and eventually Washington catches up. Sometimes it's not you even pass a law, you just make the change, and it becomes so pervasive, you don't even need the law. If this movement spreads and deepens, it creates a new American reality, and one that reaches millions of people and changes their lives for the better. As I turn to Shirlane, I could go on for hours. I won't do that to you. I will only say 
Uh, she is audacity incarnate. She, uh, in all my years of knowing Sherlane, we met on September 9th, 1991. And from that day until today, I have only seen audacity in her thinking. She doesn't have another speed. And when she thought about Thrive, uh, her mind raced ahead. And she started thinking about how all the dots could connect and how different the world could look. And uh, her belief, her energy, her optimism, uh, her ability to be very, very kind to people, but also to fix them with a look that says, we're going to do this whether you like it or not, or we're going to do this whether you think it's going to work or not, or we're going to do this whether it was the way things were done or not. It's a new day. Uh, that combination has taken us very, very far. And then when she and the team thought of Cities Thrive, uh, it was amazing how quickly, because the idea was just that good and just so pertinent, how quickly people believed and caught on and shared with one to the other and, and started to create something that could only be called at this point a movement. And I think when you build a movement, uh, that's the highest example of public service. So my honor to present the creator of this great movement, our First Lady, Shirley McRae. Good afternoon. It is afternoon now. It was morning when I started. Yes, it was. <laughs> oh, yes, it definitely was. Thank you, Bill. You are you are very kind to me. I couldn't ask for a better partner, could I? All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Now, is everybody fired up? Ready to go? Good. These past two days have been simply amazing, much more than I could ever have imagined. And I hope you feel that way too, because we're going to need your energy. We really are. I want to thank Andy Slavitt for his remarks, really bringing it like all the way around, back to us and what we have to do, how we have to think moving forward. And earlier, Matt and Walt walked you through the Washington, D.C. playbook. Yes, it looks pretty grim, doesn't it? but we know that we can work past that as well. Because as Bill said, when city leaders unite and speak with one voice, we can win big victories, right? We don't need the legislation. We'd like it, but we don't need it. We can make change on our own, whether, it, and we, whether it's for health care, whether it's for uh, the appropriations that we need, a better appropriations bill. We have proven that time and time again that, that we have what it takes to make, make progress. So this is no time to let up. We have to keep up our momentum. And I'm here to just make the call for action right now. So there are six immediate concrete actions that we can all take. Even before we leave this room, we can start. I want to make sure you know what they are. You know, people usually say the, it's the power of three. They talk about the power of three. Well, because you are so sophisticated and smart, I'm going to give you six, OK? We can all help get people covered. Can you say that with me? Get people covered. We can fight for funding. Say it with me. Fight for funding. We can sign up and show up. We can sign up and show up. We can grow our coalition. We can grow our coalition. Share our stories, share our stories, and lead by example. Lead by example. Now, let's start with the Affordable Care Act. You all know why it's important. So what are we going to do? Get people covered. And why? Because lack of insurance is one of the biggest barriers to getting good health care, getting consistent health care. We only have two weeks to go. So can we count on you to get people covered? Can we count on you to get people covered? Yes. All right, that's what I like to hear. Next, we have to fight for funding. We're facing a budget deadline, and we've got to fight like hell to save CHIP, the Children's Health Insurance Program, and critical funding for our hospital systems, and to get the increases our cities need for mental health 
and substance use services. So what are we going to do? Fight for funding. There's a sign-on letter that's going around now that calls on congressional leadership to pass the funding we need. Please, if you're a mayor, sign on. If you're not a mayor, get your coalition members to sign on, please. We plan to send it to Congress this week. Those are the two most urgent priorities in the coming weeks, getting people covered and fighting for funding. Now in 2018, we're gonna keep on calling on folks to sign up and seize every opportunity that we have to advocate for change. That is how, for the first time, we can truly help government, uh, we can truly position government to lead. Now, there are opportunities you can sign up for today. Just stop by the tables on the outside on your way out. Uh, one of those opportunities is our advocacy mission to Washington, D.C. in May. Uh, we talked about it earlier. We're going to do it again. I'm going, and I hope you will all join us. You can also sign up for our Weekend of Faith, a weekend this coming spring when our houses of worship all over the country devote part of their services to mental health, to help eliminate the stigma that keeps people from getting covered. Um, even if you're not affiliated with a house of worship, you can, you can call on your, your local leadership and tell them what we're doing and encourage them to sign up. Last year, we had 40 cities, houses of worship in 40 cities participate, and 2,000 houses of worship right here in New York City participate. And I, I think we can do better than that next year, don't you? And remember, even when there are not formal opportunities to take action, to make change, you can still do something. You can still find other ways to, to raise your voice, like showing up at the district offices of our members of Congress when, whenever they're home or whenever they're not there. You can still go to your local district office and let them know what you're thinking. If we are to hold a steady, consistent dialogue with our leadership, we have to make make sure that they know who we are and make sure we're talking with them. We cannot call on them only to prevent a, cri a crisis. We've got to talk to them like every week, okay? All right, we also need to grow our coalition. And that is the way we can make it impossible for the president and Congress to ignore us. The louder we are, the more likely we are to hear them. And so we need more voices in this coalition. You know your states and regions best if you think there are mayors, thought leaders, or organizations who are not in this coalition, who can be persuaded to join us. Please reach out to them. I know you all have your networks. I know that you can get five, six, maybe 10 people to join this coalition. We need that. The bigger the, bigger the coalition, the larger our muscle. Now before you leave today, if you can, please let us know who you plan to reach out to and our Cities Thrive team will help. They'll help follow up with additional information, support, they'll make phone calls. Uh, you know, we're here to help. You know, one of the most compelling ways to grow this coalition is by sharing our stories. And the stories of work you're doing at home, the stories of work that you're doing through this coalition, and the stories of people that you meet along the way. Not only will your stories help recruit new members, they will help change the culture by inspiring people, by encouraging people to tell their own stories about what's happened to them, uh, how their families have been affected, how their communities have been affected by the, by the lack of, of, of great health care. It's a powerful way to, to break through the, the cloud of shame, the, the stigma uh, that limits public and private conversations that we have about mental health. And I want you to know that you can always reach out to our Cities Thrive Coalition team members and, and share your stories, share your testimonials, because and we'll share them with the whole coalition. We know it's the most powerful way to move people. I think Andy was the one who said, this is not a, a red issue, it's not a blue issue, it's not a purple issue, this is about people. And if we share our stories, people are going to feel feel the pain, feel the struggle, feel the connection that we have to one another. This is what this is all about. And, and if you don't 
speak up and, and share your stories, uh, we can't make those connections. So again, please share your stories. And the last request I have of you is to lead by example. And you lead by example by, by sharing your stories and by signing up for mental health first aid. Uh, the more progress we make as, as individuals in this work, the more we are able to influence our family members and our community members and, and help people understand that, that we all have a role to play in this movement. New York City is working with the National Council on Behavioral Health to train a quarter of a million New Yorkers in mental health first aid to address the signs and symptoms of, of emotional distress. Now, I encourage you all to take the class if you have not already. I took it uh, before Thrive began. It's what inspired me to make sure that we're getting this course, uh, providing this course to a quarter of a million New Yorkers. Um, if you take the course, uh, you will feel transformed. I know as, as I felt transformed. And maybe you can find a way to bring it to your city. I, I've given you a lot of information. information. Um, I know your heads are probably packed with a lot of ideas, a lot of, of um, model programs. And, and things that you can bring back to your cities. But I, I, I want you to remember that this all comes down to, to you. You have, you have great power. You have more power than you realize. Um, this all started with just an idea. And look, look, we're, look what we're doing right now. Um, do everything you can, again, do everything you can to educate yourself about how, how you can bring this this, this movement to your own locales, wherever you are. Those six steps will take you far. So what are they again? Get people covered. Get people covered by the ACA. Fight for funding. Sign up. Grow our coalition. Share our stories. And lead by example. These are all things that you can do. No one can stop you from doing those things. This is how we make change. This is how we build the mental health system our country so desperately needs. So now let's just go at it. Are you in? Are you in? All right, onward. Thank you all.